My name is Walford Kaufman. I'm the pastor of Southside Baptist Church in Gaffney, South Carolina, and this is our Wednesday night teaching time, but if you're watching this at any time, that's okay. And But we just finished up the book of Hosea, and now let's look at Christmas. I mean, what a change of pace going from Hosea to now the story of the Christ child being born. Let's pray. Father, thank you as we journey into your words, we look at this precious gift that you've given us. And that's what it's all about, the gift that you gave us. And so now let us look at your word, let us learn from it, let us grow from it. In Jesus' name, amen. And so we see how important this is, this, this gift that the Lord has given us. On the 100th birthday a party for the musician Sir Robert Mayer, this happened many years ago, uh, England put on a big reception for him, an elderly British socialite by the name of Lady Diana Cooper. She began a conversation with a person, a lady, uh, but uh, Lady Diana, she was so vain, she wouldn't put on her glasses. And so she would put on her glasses, so she really couldn't tell who she was speaking to, but they carried on conversation and got a little bit closer, and she looked down, and she noticed all the diamonds around this lady's neck and so a little bit more squinting she realized that she had been carrying on a conversation for a good while with Queen Elizabeth and Lady Diana she very quickly said ma'am ma'am I am so sorry I didn't recognize you without your crown I didn't recognize you without your crown is that like we are now at Christmas time we keep forgetting about the Christ child, that he is a king of kings and lord of lords, that he is, see, he's more than just that little precious baby. Oh, what a gift, but that gift that went to the cross for us. So let's look at now gifts that we need to be giving to the king. The first one is God gave his son. God gave his son. Think about it. John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life there is not a gift you have anywhere as good as that gift but in 2 Corinthians 9 15 it says thanks be to God for his indescribable gift spend this Christmas season just right now maybe something every day about how wonderful this precious gift of Jesus is. Romans 6.23 reminds us, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not in trying to get perfection, not trying to earn our rights, but because of Jesus, we've been given this gift uh, for eternal life. So God first gave. He gave his son. And then we see uh, in this Christmas story, the angels gave a song. The angels gave a song. Look at Luke 1, verse 13 through 14. Look at Luke 1, Luke 1, 13 through 14. And it says there, suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, in verse 14, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those of whom his favor rests. On whom his favor rests. So we see first that they sang to the glory of God. Sang to the glory of God. Now, my wife is the music director at the church. So I've been living with this musician for 44 plus years now. And I want to tell you, you tell... You won't see her upset. It's for her to say she looks out across this congregation of people and see she's not looking for perfection. She's not looking for the greatest musicians. She just wants to see people open up their hearts, open up their mouths and sing, not to impress people, but because they want to bring glory to God. So that's what we happens here with these, these angels, that they brought glory to God. And then they sang for good will. Good will. They sang they want to be peace on this earth. And that's something we need to be proclaiming today, right? Peace on this earth. 
And then we need to remember this. We are never too poor to sing. Now, when I saw that, writing out poor to sing, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, uh, well, what does money have to do with this? See, poor can be, well, I'm not that great a singer. Or I can, I'm not that great of a person. Nobody really cares. See, we can be poor in spirit. And so think about it. No matter where we are in life, so the angels, and we know about the, the wise men and the shepherds and all that crowd that came along, it doesn't matter where you are in your walk of life that you need to bring a song to the Lord's ear. Don't worry about the person sitting next to you. Don't worry about the folks in the house next to you as you're singing. Bring glory to God by singing from your heart. You're never too poor to sing. And then we see that the shepherds gave their story. The shepherds gave their story. In Luke, in Luke 2, verse 17, we read this. Luke 2, verse 17. We see how important this is for us. And so we see, and when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what he had been told, what had been told them about this child. And so the shepherds gave their story. Uh, so they receive uh, the witness. There we, the shepherds, they heard the angels singing. They witnessed this. They got to see these angels, multitude of angels singing, uh, pr bringing praises to the Lord. And what made it so wonderful is they believed their testimony. They believed their testimony. There are so many people that are sitting Sunday after Sunday, maybe not in a church, maybe like you, online, uh, finding something on the internet, they hear the message, but they don't believe in Jesus Christ. But they receive the witness, they believe, and then they simply, they proclaim the good news everywhere they went. Isn't it kind of strange that there are people today can read something on the internet and they think, oh, that's the truth, and they tell everybody, and it is false as false can be. But they make sure they repost it. They share it, whatever. They share all this stuff, and it's not the truth. These angels heard the truth. They witnessed the truth, and they shared the truth. See, we are to follow that example. We are to follow the, the example set by the shepherds. They Were they all of a sudden professors? Were they all, all of a sudden the smartest people in town? They were still shepherds. They were kind of the outcasts of the community at that time. But they simply went and told people what they had witnessed. That's why when there is a, an incident, legal-wise, law enforcement's involved, maybe a car accident, they try to get as many witnesses as there can be. And then to corroborate, what's that word? Get their story and, and compare them. Compare their stories and how important that is to compare the stories. See, we're to follow that example. See, their people galore could have talked to those shepherds. Hey, you're a young shepherd, you're an old shepherd, you're a middle-aged shepherd. You know, you were out there. I mean, you witnessed, you witnessed, you witnessed, and all that story, and it was consistent. I mean, I want to tell you something. We've had 2,000 plus years to tear the scripture apart. There could have been witness of the writings, but nothing can refute this. Jesus came. God in the flesh. God with us. And so how wonderful this. They followed the we need to follow this example. And then the wise men gave of their substance. Now we think the wise men, think about that process. The wise men gave of their substance. Well, weren't they not rich people? Were they not well off people? Yes, they were. But look at this in Matthew 2, verse 11. Matthew 2 verse 11 how important this is we see this in this scripture that on the coming to the house they saw the child with his mother mary and they bowed down and worshiped him then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh now see a lot of times we put a lot of emphasis on gold wow frankincense that's pretty expensive 
and myrrh, this oil that they used, very expensive, but that's not all they gave. See, they gave of their substance. First is they sought the Savior for a long time. This is not like, hey guys, let's go. It's one of those adventures. They were seeking the truth. They were seeking answers. They were following the star because that's new. they knew where they could find the answer. But this was a journey that took a while. They sought the Savior, and then they worshiped the Savior. That, to me, of that scripture, that's one most important thing. These wise men, these kings, as some call them, I mean, they were very uh, affluent. They were very important. Many looked at them as, uh, you know, that's the go-to people to get wisdom and all this. But look what that happened when they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down. That was something that was very unusual for them. They didn't bow down. A lot of times, even before a king, unless it's one of those really, really tough kings, the kings won't sought them out. But instead, they sought Jesus out. And what did they do? They bowed down. What a, what a lesson for us. Don't ever think that we're that important. Don't be bragging on yourself and your accomplishments. Always making sure you bow down and worship the Savior. And then they gave the best they could. The best they could. Uh, share a story. And uh, this is not a tithing, this is not raising money kind of a, a message. But I remember a lady who used to come into the church and would get the secretary, financial secretary of the church, to write out her check. And usually it was a very big contribution. And, you know, many people, oh, Mrs. So-and-so is coming by the church. She's going to leave a good amount of money for the church. And everybody looked and all. Uh, but I had an opportunity to get to know this lady a little bit more. I was able to be at her house, and she had like a, a sunroom. And around the sunroom was six-foot tables all around the room. And there was all this stock information, portfolios, I think they may call it, uh, real estate papers, all this stuff. I found out this woman owned a lot of stock. I understand this woman owned a lot of property. At one time around the Atlanta airport years ago. So this woman, though she would write a very considerable amount of money to the church, it wasn't her all. It wasn't even her best. It wasn't even her semi-best. She could have given a whole lot more. I'm not saying the church needed it uh, and all, but what I'm saying is these wise men gave the best so we look at them gold frankincense and myrrh that is cause they dealt with things like that but i want to tell you if they'd been a janitor they would have given the best of what a janitor could have done if they were the if they were the owner of the sheep that shepherds were taking care of uh, they would have given the best i mean it wouldn't have been gold frankincense and myrrh but they would have given their best and that's all the Lord asks of us. With us might, you remember that? The two little coins, not even worth a penny. That was the best they had. That was the best she had. The wise men gave the best. And that's all the Lord wants from you. You don't have to go borrow money. You don't have to try to give what other folks give. You just give the best. And that starts in your heart. And then we see Mary... What did she give? Well, she gave her submission. It all started with a, a yes from her. In Luke 1, verse 38, she said, I am the Lord's servant. And Mary answered, May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. So what we know about this young girl, pre-15 years of age, maybe around 15, but still young, and I know that at that, that age, they did get married at a young age and all this. But you think about it. This young lady, she gave her life. She knew by carrying the child of the Most High God, her life would never be the same. I'm not talking about being in the limelight and all the publicity and all this, but she realized nothing could be the same. 
She gave her life. She gave her soul. She gave her soul for the work of God through giving birth to a precious child. She put her faith in God completely. She gave her faith in God completely. And that's all the Lord wants from us. That, how many times you've heard, heard sermons from preachers like me. You know, give your heart to Jesus and give your life to Jesus. And uh, give your all to Jesus. Well, you know, there's, well, I've got to give my heart. Okay, I'll do that. But my life, I mean, I get parts of it. I mean, that's the trouble with our society today. We've got our lives divided up into parts. There's my work. There's my home. There's my church. Uh, uh, there's my friends and all this. And so a lot of times when we think we're giving our all to the church, we're only giving a piece only a piece of our life to Jesus. He wants the whole thing, all of it. Does Jesus have all of your life today? And then we see that the people of Bethlehem, oh, the people of Bethlehem, they gave, they gave a stable, a lean-to, basically just a place cut out into, into the hillside. Not much at all. Luke 2, verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. That comes from the New King James Version. But there was no room for them in the inn. See, Mary gave her all. And I'll say this. Joseph sure gave a lot too. The woman that he was to marry with child. And she loved, I mean, he loved her so much, but he cared for her. But see, he gave it all to the Lord. But what happens? Mary gave her all, Joseph gave her all, and they gave them a stall. It's not right, is it? All and a stall. It doesn't add up, does it? So there was no room. There was no room. And is that still going on in this day and time? Think about it. Think there's no room. So look at your life right now. And so I'm going to ask you a few questions. Uh, is there room for Jesus in your life? Uh, what about our hearts? What about your heart? Is Jesus completely in control of your heart? Is there room for Jesus to come in? Hmm? Maybe there's some, there's some unforgiveness. Maybe there's some prejudice. Maybe there's some hatred in there have you see if jesus comes in he doesn't want a stall he wants to all and so what about our hearts what about our time oh no time i give an hour to church a sunday god bless you i hope you enjoy it but is god wanting some other time like monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday and saturday see God wants all of our time. What about all of our energy? What about all of our energy? Oh, I just don't have time. It's so interesting as a minister through the years. The folks can't get things done through the week. They got to get it all done on Sunday. That's right. They got to get it all done on Sunday. Well, how many times I've seen folks and heard about folks they, they had to make time on Sunday. You know, their, their week ran out. And they've got to get this done. But they're always finished by 12 o'clock on Sunday. Because of some same people that says, you know, oh, I, don't, uh, I need to do this and all. They can go out and do all they want to the rest of Sunday. So does God have your heart? Does God have your time? Does God have your energy? Hmm? God have all of your energy. So this Christmas season, as we're looking toward this, what is your gift? What is your gift to Jesus? I mean, what did the, what did the wise men give? Or oh, we can name those all. What did the shepherds give? What did the angels give? What did Mary give? So the question we finish up with is what are you giving to the Christ child? My prayer is your whole heart. If you have uh, decided to follow Jesus, please let me know. 
My cell phone number is 864-812-0073 or email me at pastor at gaffneysouthside.com. I love to hear of your decision. Maybe you accepted Jesus as your Savior years ago, but you never given your all to Him. And you realize now, it's all, not a stall, it's a all for Jesus. Let me know that too. Let's pray as we close. Father, thank you that you gave your precious gift, your only begotten Son, and that that gift keeps on giving. Now, Lord, today we pray in our hearts that we have surrender everything to you. No questions, no doubts, no wondering. We just surrender all to you. Let us do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, may the Lord bless you this Christmas season, and I hope to get to see you next week.